Good morning everyone. It's Sunday, it's range test time and I have here the Volkswagen ID5 GTX model year 2026. 79 kilowatt hour battery, 250 kilowatt all-wheel drive maximum power. I'm charging here to 100% and then we're going to do a range test at 130 kilometers an hour GPS speed. I charged at home to 100%, drove here around 30 kilometers, preheated the battery, got 50 kilowatt. I'm still getting 40 kilowatt at 96%. Amazing. Um, the car has 21 inch summer tires on, 255 in the rear, 235 in the front. Um, and like I said, charge 200%. We're right here on at the highway. Drive to the highway and drive the GPS speed uh, as much as possible. Um, it's Sunday, no truck, so it should be okay. It's freezing though, five degrees, and maybe it should be raining as well. I'm on my way, driving in 133 on this beautiful head-up display or on this tiny little cockpit. <laughs> I reset my trip, charge to 100% of course. My heat is on 23 degrees, but only driver. It's cold out, six and a half degrees. Seat heater is on full and I'm in drive mode normal, not in uh, eco, and everything is nice. It's busy? I'm a bit surprised. Why is it busy on Sunday at 6.30? That's weird. So, I don't know. I'm at 75%, used 25% of the battery, drove 67 kilometers. That's a full range of 268 kilometers. Consumption average 282 watt hours per kilometer, 28.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Um, yes, the consumption is high because six and a half degrees, heat on 23, just my side. The rear is off and the side is off and this car has a heat pump, the road is wet and it was raining but not long, for like a few minutes so far, but consumption is high, therefore range is low, it's cold, it's soon winter. I turned around here at the A3 as I always do. Now we're going back and then I'm gonna take the A92 in a different direction and then turn around and go back to the Georgia. How is the Volkswagen ID5 model year 2026 GTX on this range test? And it's really nice. I have even the uh, lane, lane change assist on, which I'm not the biggest fan of because usually it takes too long and it does here as well so when you put the indicator on it shows you the arrow that you arrow that you can go in the head-up display and here in the cockpit and you see you put the indicator on it takes a bit and then it goes but when it goes it does it really fast so it's like the most it's not like in the i5 bmw that i just drove where it was really amazing but so nothing has changed here too much other than that, the car drives great. The seats, the sport seats are a bit hard. Cindy, my wife, also already complained when she was sitting in the passenger seat. She wasn't a fan. So our ID7 seats are way more comfortable. 
uh, but you don't have to get the sport seats. Eh? Uh, consumption is high, but again, SUV, the road is wet 100%. So far, it didn't rain. Traffic, amazing. I always drove to 133 when I was allowed. So this is awesome. And still 7 degrees. Freezing. Doesn't sound like cold, but with the wetness, it's really cold. Um, noise level, because of the wetness, it's not too quiet in here at 130. So I hear the water. Um, wind noise is okay. It's comfortable, it's stable. The cruise control and steering assist is amazing as always with Volkswagen and uh, other MEB platform cars. It recognizes my touch, I barely touch it and it knows I'm here. All good. And the sound system is okay too. I used half the battery and drove 135 kilometers, so full range 270 kilometers. Consumption is a bit high right now, but I was just driving up a hill. We're gonna go down now and then it's gonna be better. Uh, it's gonna be better, but still consumption is high because of the wetness. It's raining a tiny bit right now. Not strong, but the road is really always wet and it's still cold and heat is doing and it's not hot in here. 23 degrees as usual with Volkswagen, 23 degrees in here is not 23 degrees. First of all, only heating my, my seat so everything around me is cold, that's a reason. And again, 23 degrees in Volkswagen was never hot. It was always just warm and then sometimes you have to uh, push it. I turn around, navigate it back to the charger and it thinks I arrive with 16%. But I did my calculation. When I drive this way, I drive 242 kilometers and we had 270 kilometers of range. So it's only 28, so I should arrive with 10% or 11. Maybe with a downhill 12, but not 16. <laughs> and consumption is even higher now. So I have 100 kilometers of range and 62 kilometers to go. We'll see. <laughs> Yeah, I made a mistake. <coughs> so I drove uh, the other direction because I thought, ooh, I'm, I'm arriving with a way too high state of charge. And then now I realized I forgot to turn off the adder charger, charging stop. And it did that, and that's why we would arrive with 16%. I turned that now off and we arrived with 8%. So. Uh, I didn't even need to, to do the detour that I just did. I would have arrived with the 11% that I said. Uh, I'm an idiot and the car did it right. I just uh, didn't turn off the option. Loser. Do you want to charge for free? Of course you do. And how can you do that? With NCharge. NCharge is an app. You install it on your phone. And when you are the charger like this, you rate the charger. You give the charging provider via NCharge the information if something is not working. Here at Ionity, two displays are not working. Can you park there with a camper and other stuff? That's very important. And and charge and the charging provider is so thankful for this information that it gives you kilometers and stars and these you can exchange for charging credit and now a new option in and charge in germany and france you can use the app right away to start charging and use your charging credit so check it out there's a link in the description below I arrived with eight percent 280 watt hours per kilometer average consumption driven and average speed so I looked at Google Maps and planned the whole route and it was 253 kilometers and so I get to a range of 275 kilometers under these conditions. All-wheel drive version means always 6, 7, 8 percent higher consumption than the rear-wheel drive version. Yes, the motor is not spinning when you, so it doesn't get any power when you're driving. 
uh, a constant speed, but it's still it still uh, has uh, resistance to the drive and therefore you have a bit of higher consumption. It's not like in the Polestar 3 where the whole motor gets detached from the whole drivetrain. I'm doing a charging test right now, getting 186 kilowatt at 19% still. See if it has the same charging curve as the 2024 ID4 that I tested back in the day. Will be exciting. Um, GTX, of course and then we charge to 80 percent and do the next range test if you want to compare range results um, there's a google spreadsheet uh, link in the description below also for my long distance trips if you want to follow me on instagram battery life one and if you want to support the channel there's a patreon link in the description below and here on youtube there's also channel membership and if you want to know what's happening behind the scenes i have a third youtube channel behind the battery but that's it for me thank you much for watching have a great day and take care bye